friends. Welcome to another Make It Monday. Thanks for joining me, whether you're watching live on Facebook or if you're catching the replay on Facebook or YouTube. I am so happy that you're joining me. Uh, I am Nan Gerlitz, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator from Bloomington, Illinois, and I'm here to help you connect with your people, whether that's gathering to craft together or you making handmade items to share with them. It's all about making and deepening those connections. So let's get to it. All righty. So first up, as always, we have our Friday Night Stampin' Uh, results and these were the cards from this past Friday and I am back in the winner's circle woo with my trees card. We did have lots of votes for both cards and we always love that. Um, it's nice when it's not a blowout because <laughs> you know you feel bad right so um, but yes we have the uh, the adorable badgers just giving hugs loved that um, and I wanted to point out too that Russ used two different color reds here, so it kind of set it off a little bit, um, which reminded me of our new two-tone card stock that we have uh, in our new scrapbooking brochure. Um, and it is like a full strength of one color on one side and then kind of a stamped off version of a, just a lighter version of that same color. And it's a white core. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do with it. I do not have any in my possession yet, so that'll be coming and, um, you know, I'll show you all sorts of fun things once I get some. So, but um, yes, very cute card. We love that. And then uh, trees is what we're going to be making tonight. So uh, I had a whole different vision originally for this type of card, and I'll, I'll show you kind of how I made that come to be afterwards. I've also spent uh, a lot of the last few weeks working on items for an upcoming craft fair that I'm doing. So if you are in the Bloomington Normal area uh, or are going to be the first weekend in November, on November 2nd, I'd love for you to swing by the Bloomington High School and um, come meet me in person, live in person, um, and um, check out all the stuff that I've got there. But I will show you a few things that I've been working on. So stick around till the end. <laughs> okay, um, let's get started, right? Yes. <laughs> um, just check in my notes. I always make notes because otherwise I get, I get done and I go, oh, I forgot to tell them that. So uh, yeah, ADHD brain. <laughs> so, but I have pre-stamped and pre-die cut a few things for us tonight just to save time because, you know, it's the same tree over and over and over again, right? So, and we are working with uh, Mossy Meadow tonight. I almost said Mellow Moss, which was a previous Mossy color that we used to have. This is Mossy Meadow. And it's funny. So I, um, I keep all of my cardstock because uh, I use primarily eight and a half by 11. I keep it in regular hanging folders in a file cabinet. Um, so the full sheets are in the regular hanging folder. And then any scraps are in a manila folder in that same folder so that we don't cut into a full sheet if we have a scrap that's big enough, right? Uh, and then if we have a half, you know, like a, a base card stock like this, then we put that in front of the manila folder. So, you know, if you just need a base in Mossy Meadow and it's already cut, it's going to be right there. So kind of a little thing. But I bring that up because Mossy Meadow is almost the same color as those um, green hanging folders. <laughs> so sometimes I overlook it in my drawer because it just looks like another folder. So we have a lot of it. So I think I'll be using that for our Christmas cards this year. And we're using Basic Beige tonight, too, which is a, um, a newer color to our line. And I am telling you, I am falling in love with this Basic Beige. So, all right. So I've got a bunch of trees already cut out and I've got a couple that I left to cut out on camera. And that's because I wanted to show you, uh, we're using the mini stamp and cut and emboss tonight because all of these dies will fit through the mini. So I wanted to uh, whip these last couple of trees through here so I could um, just point out a little tip for you. So all of these trees I did are stamped in the Mossy Meadow ink. This one's on Mossy Meadow. And then I also used Old Olive and our Granny Apple Green. And as always, I have 
linked a, uh, a full supply list in the video description. So if you're wondering exactly which colors I used or stamp sets or anything, um, it's all right there for you. Okay, so let's get that lined up. Now, a little tip I wanted to give you because when I first got my mini, I had some trouble getting the whole sandwich to go through there, right? Because what I'm used to when I use my big one is I get everything lined up nice and neat, right? And it doesn't go through when you try to do that. It, watch, it will this time. Ah, yes, it will. It made a liar out of me. I have had difficulty before getting that to go through. And I know others have as well. So what is recommended and what I usually do when I'm not trying to have it prove me wrong <laughs> is, we'll die cut this other one. And what you want to do is get your, your bottom sandwich is all fine. You know, the base and the, um, the main cutting plate. And then what you want to do is when you put your top cutting plate on, just back it up a little bit so that the edges are not even. And basically what that does is it puts less pressure on those interior rollers when you're first going through and everything goes through a lot easily. So if you are ever having trouble with the mini and it's, I believe it's a, it's probably a physics thing <laughs> because there's less of an opening here. So there's, more surface area kind of being covered by your dies. So I think that's why. Uh, but if you're ever having trouble, you know, kind of getting that sandwich through, don't force it. Just pull that top plate back a little bit. As long as it's covering the entire die you're trying to do, it'll cut just fine. All right. So that's my little tip for all of you with the mini cut and emboss, which if you have not gotten into emboss or cutting and embossing yet, die cutting, uh, that might be your gateway, <laughs> your little gateway drug, right? Um, it is a fabulous product. It just, it will not fit all of our dies and, uh, and the majority of the embossing folders are made for the larger machine. But if you're low on funds, if you're low on space, or if you just want to dip your toe in, the mini might be the perfect thing for you, right? Okay. So when I originally kind of thought of this concept for a card, I was going to just ink blend all of the trees from back to front, thinking they would be darker in the back and then they would be lighter up front, right? Because the shadows would be in the back. And then I realized, well, you can't ink blend that because if I start with a really dark color, you won't see the lighter colors in the front, right? So that's why I ended up going with the die cut instead. I don't think I did enough of the olive. So this one's going to be a little different than I did. <laughs> you know me, that's how we uh, that's how we roll here, right? I pretty much do one different every time I'm on camera. So um, I was kind of laying things out on Friday night, and then I decided that the back was too... Um, plain, too much white space. So I decided to go with my original idea a little bit and do some ink blending on the back. So I'm using this, um, this is all part of the Frosted Forest bundle. So the bundle comes with the stamp set and the dies and these awesome stencils for both types of trees. And we're just using Mossy Meadow ink for this entire card is one ink color. So all I'm going to do is start at the bottom. We're going to go up. I don't want it to be really, really dark. And mostly it's just the top that's going to show anyway. I want kind of a hint of trees. And I figured this way they could kind of be like, oh, in the distance. Maybe there's a fog, right? There's a. It's a bit of a mist in the forest. So we just need a little color back there. And I'll pop four of them across the main spot here. One more. 
And so when you're doing stencils too, um, you know, use a bit of tape. Use your, like a painter's tape like I'm using tonight, or you can use washi tape or the post-it tape, anything that's not going to ruin your cardstock, um, you know, and that you can peel up, obviously, is going to be just fine to use for that. So, and I do have, I have, as you know, lots of the post-it tape because that's what I use to hold my dies down. But I also have painter's tape in my drawer. So I kind of have a, something to hold everything. You can also use like a glue dot on the bottom of your uh, cardstock if you want to hold it in place. That I was ink blending light enough that I wasn't worried about my cardstock moving, but it definitely has happened. Um, the other thing I wanted to remind you, I think I've pointed this out before, that um, our inks are water-based. So all I need to do when I'm done with this is I'm just gonna take it upstairs and run it under cool water in the sink and it'll be all clean. I just dry it off and it's ready to go to the next color. Um, I wanna get that color off of there only because if I go to say ink blend yellow or, or something else, it's gonna have some green to it because I'm going over that same part. So you definitely wanna clean them, but it's no more than a rinse. That's all you need to do. All right, let's start assembling our trees. So we're going to pop our liquid glue out. I'm just going to put these right in the center here in between those other tree tops. So you have two sizes of this. Um, fir tree, evergreen tree, spruce tree, whatever you want to call it. So that large one, I've just put mossy meadow ink on mossy meadow cardstock. And now we're moving to the old olive cardstock. Still the same mossy meadow ink. And I only did three of these, I think out of four because you know I can't count apparently I think I was just dizzy from all the bookmarks and ornaments I was making so <laughs> so we're just gonna oh we'll offset it a little bit I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with these it'll be fine though We'll be missing one right there. <laughs> okay, so now I've got Granny Apple Green here, and I actually came up with these colors uh, from our color wheel, which is also available in our catalog, and it's going to be available to all of you come November. Very exciting news uh, that we are releasing the um, color wheel, just like I have, that you can spin around and get all the good ideas from. Uh, to customers in November. So very exciting. So for these, I want them to be kind of popped up a little bit, but not totally. So what I'm going to do is just put a dimensional up at the top here. Peel that off. And then I'm just going to do a little liquid glue on the bottom. So it kind of sets up. All right, so it's going to pop down, you know, even at the bottom, and then it's just going to raise up at the top a little bit. Gives it a little bit of dimension, but we're going to go over it with that ribbon. And so this way it'll lay flat under the ribbon, and that'll be nice, easier to work with. You do, because that dimensional is going to pop everything up a little bit, you just want to hold it down for a second until that glue sets a little bit. Because remember, the liquid glue will give you a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of zhuzh room. <laughs> okay, let's do our ribbon. And I'm going to do the ever popular fork bow for you. So if you've never seen this, this is a nice treat for you uh, if you ever, if you feel like you love the look of bows, but you absolutely hate tying bows and you get frustrated and you go through a lot of ribbon because you just cut them all up and throw them away. This might save you. <laughs> so I am right handed. So I hold my fork. This is like a big serving fork. 
It does need to have an even number of tines so that you have a center slot, okay? So it doesn't matter. Depending on how wide the fork is, that's how wide your bow is going to be, okay? So I'm going to hold my fork in my left hand, and my ribbon is going to come over from my right side um, because I'm right-handed. So if you are left-handed, you can try to reverse all this, or you can try to do it just like I do because, you know, we have two hands, right? Okay, so I'm going to come over the top and around the back. And then we're going to go under those, come out the other side. Okay, so just like that. So we went over and then under there in that middle time, in the middle slot. Now I'm going to hold this ribbon with my left hand and the fork. We're gonna pull this one down and go up and through that middle tine still, and then just tie a knot on the back. And when you slide it off, you have the perfect bow. And both of the sides are equal, and it doesn't accidentally untie, which is a fabulous thing. And um, I just leave it on the spool when I do that, and then I cut, you know, however much I need off of it when I'm done. So I'm just going to wrap this around the card, um, and it's not going to meet in the back. So that saves you some ribbon as well. And seriously, how gorgeous is this ribbon? This is from our mini catalog right now. It's um, cherry cobbler and with gold edging. Mm. Ooh, scrumptious. All right, when I am attaching ribbon like this, I like to use our hair and tape. It is a um, strong adhesive. It's usually perfect for making like, whoa, boxes and 3D items and things like that. And you can just tear it with your hands. You don't have to cut it with scissors or anything like that. All righty. Just going to wrap that end around the back. We're going to go over, and I will explain why I'm using the tear and tape in just a moment. Get that pretty even. And I'm going to trim off that end a little bit. I don't like to have a lot of excess ribbon because it's just going to add bulk, right? So part of the reason I love to use the tear and tape is because it's going to hold the ribbon there very nicely. But also then when I take off that paper backing, it's going to hold the whole, this part of the card to the card base really well, even though the ribbon is kind of putting some stress on that area, right? So we'll just get a little stamp and seal out here, do a top and bottom. I did forget to grab an inside piece for my card, so I'll have to add that later because I don't want you all to have to wait while I go get one. I think I have to cut one because they're all, I've used them all, but I'll show you the inside of my other card. Um, so then I had to grab a different stamp set. <laughs> I grabbed our Christmas friends because this Happy Holidays was kind of just what I wanted with the uh, cherry uh, cobbler ribbon and then that, all those green trees. I thought it was nice and Christmassy, holiday-y. <laughs> um, and there just wasn't a good sentiment for what I wanted in the stamp set I was using. So definitely make sure, um, like if you're a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, there's so many great sentiments that you get every month in those kits. Um, so definitely, you know, take a walk through those. And just to reiterate what I do when there's a, a cling stamp, so it's a red rubber, obviously you can't see through it. And the I cannot guarantee that that label is exactly where those words are on the stamp. So what I do is I line up my block with my grid paper or with my glass mat, and then I take my stamp face up and just as best as I can line those words up with one of those lines, okay? So now I can line up my little strip of paper here. 
That's also the basic beige. I can ink that up. And I know that this is lined up. So if I get that close and then I just line it up with one of those, line up the bottom of my block with one of those lines, I know I have a perfectly straight sentiment. All right. And then let's do a fun little um, slanted edge. Because I like, you know, I don't like to just have a straight edge, right? And you don't have to have a punch or a die or anything like that if you don't want. So all I do on my trimmer is I just angle it however I want. And then to get that exact same angle, what I used to do was I would take this piece and I would put it over here and then I would take my scissors and it would usually move. <laughs> so now what I do, learned this from one of my buds, is I just line up this angle with one of the lines on my trimmer. And when I cut it, it is exactly the same angle on both sides. And all I need is my trimmer for that. So I love it. All right, let me check my notes and make sure I'm giving you all the tips I wanted to. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm doing so well tonight, you guys. All right. Here's another little tip for you. I love our dimensionals. They are um, cut in hexagons so you get a lot of like you get 300 of these for a pack I think um, but don't overlook all these little edge guys and you don't even need your scissors usually I just kind of rip them so I'm going to use those edge guys to go like kind of top and bottom because this is going to straddle that ribbon now it will probably cover It'll probably hit the ribbon as well, but this will give a lot of good adhesion to the cardstock on either side of that ribbon if I go top and bottom, right? If I kind of straddle over it with the dimensionals. So this is also good for like if you just had this piece and you wanted to just do a, a strip of dimensionals on it and it wasn't even straddling ribbon, those edge pieces are perfect for that. Plus you're getting more for your money. And then because we love bling, I consulted the stamper man on this because I just felt like it needed bling. And we decided one gold sequin on that middle tree. And look, I've got my triangle. I've got my sentiment. I've got my uh, sequin. And then I've got my bow. So <laughs> got my little triangle of design going on. So a little bit different because we're missing our tree here, which is kind of cool, right? It's like, because forests aren't perfect. So that's my story, I'm sticking with it. So after I did this card, I realized, well, my first thought was to make the back trees really dark, which I did with the cardstock. But then I put these lighter trees back there and I thought, huh, what if I did my ink blending thought but reverse, I went from light in the background to darker up front. So I tried that, and this is what I came up with. And I am just going to tell you I'm kind of in love with it. <laughs> this was originally what I thought, too, was blue trees, you know. Um, so I will be making a card out of this one for sure. And I will probably post the, the finished one on my Facebook page. So if you want to see what I come up with. or you can also subscribe to my email newsletter if you're not already. I will share that this week in my email newsletter. Okay, so a couple things here, and then I'm going to show you my craft show items as well. Uh, first of all, I want to remind you. Fine, it was just my trimmer. <laughs> um, want to remind you that all of our kits collection is up to 30% off right now. And that includes, because I thought maybe you don't really know what our kits collection is like. So there's, there's card kits, there's home decor kits, there's um, giftables, treat packages, all that kind of stuff. And I happen to have this one that I have not put together yet. This is the Rustic Christmas Countdown Kit. So if you could kind of see here, it's got, you know, one through. 25 and they're little envelopes Oops. so here are the little envelopes 
They're all, they have a scalloped edge there and everything, but you get everything you need. You've got all the little die cut stickers in here to put everything together. You've got the twine, um, adhesive comes included in the kits. They've even got all the clothespins you need to hang it just as they've done here if you want, or you can use those for something else. Um, but this one is one of the ones that is on sale. So, uh, Perfect. I did check right before I came on live and it was still available. So I know some of our kits have sold out temporarily because of this sale. So definitely don't wait. There is a shopping link in the video description. So if you need to get to my online store, you can just pop over there and under specials, you'll see the kit sale and you can check them all out. The other thing that's going on right now is our starter kit special. You can see that as well. Um, in the link in the video description or if you go to my online store you can also check on specials there and i believe that is listed there as well so normally our starter kit is um 99 and you pick out 125 dollars of your choice of product so and that includes like kits so if they're on sale you're getting even more for your buck this month uh you can pick out sale kits and have your money go even farther but during the month of October, you get an extra $30 in your kit. So you still pay the $99. You get to pick out $155 worth of product. And there's no obligation to do anything after you purchase that starter kit. So if you want to continue on and get your discount and just that's it, just sell to yourself, you can do that. If you want to get a small group of family and friends that like to craft to help you make your minimums, you can do that. If you want to build a business, you can do that as well. And if you change your mind at any time and want to do a different thing, it's very flexible. <laughs> so, I mean, it must be fabulous because I've been doing this for over 21 years. So uh, it's a, one of the greatest companies I've ever been a part of. Um, highly recommend it. And if you have any questions, you can shoot me a message. You can email me at stampernan at gmail.com. Um, yeah, all the ways you can get a hold of me. I would be happy to answer any questions you have. Okay, craft show items. So um, this is just a smattering. I have a few other things as well, but uh, I am making some bookmarks. So this is just a couple of examples. Got our butterflies. I also have these really fun uh, acrylic ornaments that I've made. So they have a nice pattern on the back and then they've got the really fun Lots of different patterns there too. I've got some that even have dogs on them. <laughs> so I'll get my pet lovers. Um, one of my favorite things that I've made, and there are several designs of these, are these uh, little boxes, but they are gift card holders. So like this particular one has a little belly band, so it just slides right off. And when you open it, there is a little insert here. You can see it has the little slots that you can hit your gift card in there. And I've also included wrapped uh, Hershey bars that match your box. <laughs> so lots of fun things are going to be available at the um, craft show. That is November 2nd. Like I said, if you're in the Bloomington area, I'd love to meet you in person. Um, if I've met you in person before, I'd love to see you again. <laughs> so, all right. That is all for I, I have for you tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, here's your reminder that if you have picked up some tips or gotten some inspiration from this video, I would love it if you would share it so that your friends and family can also get some of those uh, tips and inspiration. Till next week, I'm still Nan Gerlitz. Happy stamping.